Hello Stampers! My name is Linda Bettinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. I'm so glad you could join me today. I have a very fun card for you uh, as a result of putting my swaps video up uh, earlier this week. Um, I had a request from one of the viewers to show how to make the arrow fold card. So I thought I would do that today and I've also done something a little bit different in that uh, I made this card in a 5 by 7 size so it's a little bit bigger and I think it's going to just be a lot of fun to do lots of different things with and then once it's up on my blog I will put all of the dimensions for a a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, the standard A2 size as well. But today I'm going to show you how to make this uh, 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 in a five by seven uh, size. And so let's just get started. Here is my card and I used some of the hand pen paper and I used some of the shimmer vellum and this time I used it in the soft succulent color and so here is the card this is the way it opens and in the one we're making today I'm going to change just a couple of things I'm going to change the big flower to this brighter color and the smaller flower to the um, which is that that's the cinnamon cider color and uh, I think that's just about it we might put a sentiment on the inside and uh, so I made this a congratulations card. Seems like lately all I've had to do is put out congratulations cards. And these are the in color um, uh, rhinestones, which I think are still on back order. And if that's the case, then uh, I think what we'll do is just use regular rhinestones to doll this up. Or we could use some of these um, Artistry Blooms um, sequins and I thought these blue ones would pick up the blues and the greens and I think that'll look real pretty on here too. So what do we need? We need a card. This is a thick whisper white and it is cut 10 inches by 7 inches and scored at 5 so that it ends up being 5 by 7. And so that is our card base. And as it turns out, I've not made one of these cards before, but it's not difficult at all. And um, so I'm going to, I'm going to switch out my tool for my take a pick tool, because I'm going to show you two ways to score this. The thing that we need to do is we need a ruler and we need to mark the halfway point on this long end and the halfway point on this shorter end. So this is seven inches wide. So we're going to mark that at three and a half inches. So I'm going to set my ruler down here at the one inch. There we go. So there's three and a half. I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to put a little tick mark right down here at the bottom of that card. Then we're going to do the same thing on here. This is five inches, so we need things marked at a two and a half inch mark. So there's a tick mark on that side. And then we're going to do that same thing on this side. And so two and a half. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you the inside of this. So all we need to do is fold this piece back and actually it makes it quite a bit sturdier and then the card does stand this way. This is also though one of those places you could use your card stand that we learned about making the other day uh, if you wanted it to show it in a flatter kind of look. Let me see if I've got one of those handy. I'm sure I do. And I'll link that uh, video 
uh, so that you can watch this video as well. But if you wanted to have your card displayed so that it stood like that, you could use one of these stands. And it looks like I just need to burnish this upper level here so the card sits just as flat as it possibly can. And there, we've got it on a stand so that it would look like this, or you can let it stand and it does stand on its own. Okay, so let's go about what we need to do this. So we've got our base that is 10 by seven, scored and folded at five inches. Then we need a piece. I use this soft succulent shimmer paper, and this piece is six and a half by four and three quarters. And we are going to need to make one mark on this, and we're going to do put a mark at the halfway mark on this one too. That's six and a half, so it will be at three and a quarter. So at three and a quarter, we're going to put a little tick mark right down here at the bottom of that piece. Then I have my uh, designer series paper, and this piece is five and three quarters by four and a quarter. And so we need to put uh, a tick mark also on this one right at the bottom and this one is at two and seven eighths. So I'm going to put my tick mark at two and seven eighths right down here on the bottom. All right, now we need to be able to score these pieces. I'm going to show you two ways to score uh, this larger piece here. Uh, you can do this with a ruler and what we're going to do is I'm going to score one side with a ruler and my take a pick tool with the point in it. So any stylus that you have and I'm going to put my ruler right on that tick mark at the bottom and then at the top here I'm going to put my ruler at this corner. And in fact, let me open that up so that I'm not scoring both pieces. So again, right at the tick mark here and right at the corner of the fold of this card here. And we're going to make a score line there just using this stylus. And you can see I've got a good score line. All right, then next, we are going to, we made a tick mark here at two and a half, and we're going to put our ruler there and then back down to this same spot in the middle and then on our two and a half inch mark on this side, and we're going to go ahead and score that there. And so there are my two score marks, I think you can see those, uh, using the stylus and then I just need to erase my little pieces here and oh this one I gotta leave because I'm going to show you then how you can score it <clears throat> on this other side using your trimmer. Now you'll find that it's almost easier to do this with a ruler um, just because you've got to look through the ruler and the stylus are right on your piece of paper on a cushion. This is a little bit removed in that you've got to be in the middle of this scoring panel and right on that spot here in the cutting channel and then down to that tick mark there. And you just have to make sure that you're good and lined up then you can use your score tool and put that score line in. And then this one at that two and a half inch mark and again at this bottom piece right here in the center and then score that as well. So that's two ways you can score this 
and both of them give us pretty good score marks on our card. All right. Now, uh, we'll need the trimmer again in a minute, but what we're going to do is fold this first piece away from you. If this is the front of the card, this first piece I'm going to fold away from me and I'm going to burnish it with my bone folder. And you just want to be very careful about your marks because getting this uh, right is uh, paramount to the card coming out and looking right. And then we're going to fold this second one away from us just like we did the first. And get that one marked with our bone folder. And so there we've got our first four line burnished. And then what we're going to do to get this wing that's on the card is we're going to fold this second one back towards ourselves. So down like this and then back this way. And again, coming to that same point and burnishing that fold there. And then the same thing here, down and then back and away. And if we've scored this right, we should have a perfect burnish. <clears throat> and there we go. And I'm going to reinforce those folds here with my um, bone folder. And you see there's quite a bit of springiness and there we've got our arrow fold in there. Like I said, this card isn't difficult to make. Um, it's just, uh, it's just a, a tiny bit fiddly. So what I did learn was that um, to make this stay down the way I wanted, I used some Tombow glue um, on the inside of this panel and kind of stayed away from the places that it might kind of squeak out. <clears throat> Let me get a little bit of that glue off of that point. There we go. And then glue that one down, glue that wing down, and kind of hold that in place for a minute until we get um, let Tombow kind of get its grip. And then we're going to do the same thing here. And that's going to come across here. So I'm going to put my glue inside here. And you don't need a whole lot. Just a little bit. Just enough to hold that wing down. And then again, holding that down and in place until Tombow gets a good grip on that on that piece. <clears throat> so meanwhile, I'll go ahead and start putting some glue on this piece. And again, not a tremendous amount, just enough to kind of hold that in place and start getting that one held down. I think this one's good now, so we can move over here. And then I'm going to do that same thing I'm going to, I'm putting my finger down because I don't want to put glue any higher than that. <clears throat> and I'm just going to set some glue on the inside of that area and then hold this piece down to get that to glue down. There we go. And now with an extra burnish on the top here, our card lays down nice. And then we're going to add some additional pieces to it so it'll hold down even better. All right, so I'm gonna bring back my trimmer now uh, and we're going to cut our designer series paper and our, and our layering piece here the way we need it. So we are going to cut this piece and we're going to save every little piece that's left over because we need it for the card. So I'm going to put this corner 
in the cutting channel. I think you can see that, yeah. And then this corner right on that tick mark until I've got both of them set right where I want it. Now, on this, and when you're cutting, <clears throat> one of the things you don't want to have happen is to get your blade started up here and then end up pushing this corner or pushing this. And so often when I'm doing a diagonal cut like this, I will start with my blade someplace in the center and I will cut up and then come back and cut back away. And that way I don't scrunch my corners. All right, so now we're going to come back and do that same thing. We're going to put this corner into the cutting channel and we're going to come right back down to this same point here at the bottom. Make sure we've got both of those right where we want them. And then again, put my blade somewhere. Did that move? It did just a hair. Put my blade down here and get that cut. So, well, I ended up with just a little bit of a fragment there. Okay, and then we're going to do that same thing with our designer series paper. So we're going to cut from the corner to the tick mark that we put at the bottom. And again, put my blade more in the middle, cut up and back. And then we're going to do that same thing. And with directional paper, you just have to be careful that you've cut your piece so that the pattern is the way you want it to be on the front of the card. So on this one, we're going to put that corner and down here at the bottom and put my blade in the middle and cut up and back and there we go. All right, now we're all prepped to put this card together. And like I said, it really is quite simple. So the first thing we have to do is to put our big piece in here. And that's gonna go in here. And I'm just going to use my Tombow tape runner. And I'm gonna to come to the interior a little bit because we've got designer series paper that's gonna go on right over the top of that. And one of the things that I have found on this shimmer paper is that you can't really see that tape runner on the back. So I think we're safe to use just about anything we want to put this down. So I'm going to set that in place, get that set up just the way I want it. Now this piece is ready to go right on top of that. And again, that shimmer paper has a little bit of surface roughness. So I'm going to add quite a bit of glue to the back of this piece to put it in place. And we've got a nice wide margin with these cuts to put this in place and try to get that centered. Well, close. <laughs> there we go. And put that piece in place. Then we're going to add our decorations here. And that has the added effect of giving you more decoration on the front and you've automatically got your decorations for the inside. So these pieces are gonna go down here on our card. So once again, just going to put some snail on these pieces and put them into place. And there we have most of our decorating done. Isn't that fun? And it's a very impressive looking card, isn't it? I think it's very, very attractive. All right, then the other piece you have to have, uh, depending on how you plan to decorate the front, now you could do this with um, uh, either stamp in the hand pen suite. Let me grab that so I can show you. Um, since this 
paper had more of a flower that looked like this. I used this one instead of this one. But depending on what paper you put on here and what die set you used, you could do anything you wanted. But I kind of like the way that one came out, except I wanted this in the lighter color, so I'm going to change that around. So I have this piece of uh, scrap white, and I've got my flower mounted here, and I have my memento ink, and I'm just going to go ahead and get this done. And because that's photopolymer, I am going to bring this little pad back here. This is my Stamparatus pad uh, that originally came with my very first Stamparatus, and it works just fine. Okay, so I'm going to put this down here, put pressure all over so I get a good image. There we go. And then I have, uh, so I'm using, the inks that I'm using on this are the ones that are in this paper. I'm using Mint Macaron for the leaves and Pool Party and Cinnamon Cider for the flowers. And on this one, I thought that it might be more interesting to use the Pool Party full strength on this upper flower. And this stamp isn't exactly perfect on this flower, but it's very close. So there, I'm going to put that down. And there I've got my image stamp there. Isn't that pretty? All right. And then I have the little bit smaller flower. Oops. And, and I started to ink this in this. Maybe I'll just do both of them in this. See what happens. There we go. And then I'm using the um, mint macaron for the leaves. And I have the largest leaf here mounted on a block. And I'm just going to put that into place. Not a lot of contrast in that. Uh, there we go. All right, I'm going to see if I can move some of that. You know what, maybe we'll just tinge this flower in the um, cinnamon cider since it doesn't go all the way to the ends anyway and just add a little bit of color. I'm using a blender pen to maybe get some of that uh, mint, uh, these cinnamon cider highlights on this flower. And that way we get a bit more contrast and I'm going to do that same thing on this flower. Just get a little bit of contrast of this cinnamon cider. You'll have to tell me what you think of that. Perhaps you'd like to use some of the more traditional colors for the flowers on, on, your, uh, on your leaves and flowers. But I'm just going to add that little bit of extra color in here. And then I'm going to use some of that uh, green right down here on my stem. Okay, and let's see, the other complementary color was Pear Pizzazz. So maybe I will add a little bit of Pear Pizzazz highlights to my leaves and darken those up a bit. I think I'm going to like that a lot better to get some um, different 
color and a little bit more contrast into my into my flowers here, my focal point. Yep. Okay, there we go. So that is, let me clean that off a little bit and put that away. And there we've got a very pretty flower. Now the dies for this um, cut out this large flower. And so I'm gonna go off camera and cut this piece out and we'll be ready to finish off our card. Okay, I've cut my flower and this is the dies uh, to this penned flowers and this was the outline die I used to cut out this flower. All right, so now we're going to do a couple of things. I've got a little strip of Whisper White here and I've got congratulations from the hand pen suite right down here and we're going to do that in cinnamon cider because I think it's a nice contrasting color and I'm going to set it right down here along the bottom. I don't know if you can see that or not but I can move that whole operation up here and put my congratulations right down on that edge. Perfect. And then I'm going to use my trimmer to cut out that piece. And this is what we get. So I've got my congratulations all ready to go. I'm going to add some dimensionals to my flower and then we'll put everything in place. Now I've got my flower to put in place right here on the front of our card and I have this congratulations and I'm going to just put one dimensional on this end and then a little bit of snail along this end and I'm going to put that congratulations right here across my flower. Now then, the other thing I did was I took, talk about old packaging, this is a little bit of linen thread that I have here and I cut a piece of this linen thread and then doubled it up I'm going to take the kinks out of that. And um, made a little linen bow here for my flower. I need a glue dot put this into place and so I've got putting that on a glue dot and then scrunching that glue dot up and putting it into place right here above my sentiment so that the tails kind of can hang down wherever. There we go. All right. Now we have just the uh, bling to add to this and I am going to try these sequins because they've got the blue in here and they'll pick up that um, color. And so let's see what happens. Some of these have more of a green cast and some of them have a blue cast and I'm going to take a couple of these largest ones and just start dotting them around the page. So I've 
got five of those large ones on there and I think that's pretty nice and I think I'm going to put one in the center of this little flower here yep I think that's pretty good and I'm going to add one more maybe right down here there we go all right now we can I'm going to leave the inside of this blank. I was thinking I might put a sentiment on it, but um, I think I'd like to wait until I'm ready to send this card. And I did um, do a couple of things, um, the first of which is you can get five by seven envelopes at like an Office Depot or one of those. You can get a little package of them to send this size card. But that's, it is such a substantial card, but I think that can go with just the re regular postage. That is my project for the day. So a different fold called the arrow fold. And I think it's a very impressive looking card and yet not difficult in any way to make a couple of score lines and a couple of cuts and you've got the whole thing. And uh, while you're using a little bit more cardstock, um, it's pretty impressive size. So there we go. You'll have to tell me whether you like it better with the cinnamon cider or the pool party flowers with the, uh, with the embellishment on there. And so that is my project for the day. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, well, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Or you could join my team. Um, always a good idea to join Stampin' Up! Um, $125 worth of product for $99. We have all kinds of specialists and experts on our team that can help with social media, that can help with... Uh, uh, making videos if that's what you want to do, building a blog, building a business, or I have many, many people on my team that are just hobby demonstrators and just join for the discounts. And that's all good. All parts of it. Uh, we have a lot of fun. We do swaps. We do demonstrations. We have uh, trainings. We do all kinds of things on our team. And uh, it's a lovely bunch of people to join. So thanks again for stopping by. My uh, prize draw for this month is the Art Gallery Bundle, the stamp set and the die set. And you can put yourself in the drawing by putting an order of any size on my store, lbedinger.stampinup.net. And you can get to it through my blog, www.inkandingenuity.com. And um, so that's it for me, and I'll be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye!